What should you be thinking about while inking a pencil drawing? I'm going to show you some examples of inks done for my pencils submitted to proco.com slash marvel and you'll get to see some common mistakes and how to avoid them. So Ash, the first thing I'm looking at is, you know, solid black. I'll push it a little bit more. If you can, try to get as black as possible. But if you can't, it's fine because you can always fix it later in uh, Photoshop or something. Some of your lines, I'm looking at it, it still feels a little bit shaky. So try throwing it, just try to capture this line like one stroke. It does feel like you were kind of maybe true the lines a little about that speed or maybe this speed. So be careful with that. Just go a little bit faster. The faster you go, the smoother the line is going to go. So always try to rotate your page to fit the angle of your hand and then throw it. That's how you want to do it. Okay. So brush techniques take a really good understanding of how to hold the brush, the angle you want to hold brush when you're throwing your strokes. How do you hold it? You can even hold it as just to capture just the tip of it. Uh, you can also hold it at an angle if you want to capture like a nice fat end and fade off to a, a thin tip. So you really have to know what, what you're doing, how to control that tool. It's a lot easier if you have a nib. Nibs, it's just basically dip and go. And if you want to thicken up a line, you just basically go, back, go over it over and over and over. And you just thicken it like that. And that's one way. If you try to thicken it too much, if you use a nib to try to push down really hard and thicken it, there's a really good chance ink is just going to just explode. So be careful with that. If you start thick and thin, it's just a flick. A flick of your hand. Is, and that's pretty easy. Anyone can just flick their hands. But to go thin to thick, you're, that's, that's control. You have to have nice, <laughs> solid control. I can do both so I can see it. I can see exactly what it is. But the easiest way is just go thick to thin. It's the easiest route. If you want to see all the tools and techniques you'll need to ink a comic like a pro, Mark Morales can give you the rundown at proco.com slash marvel. I'm looking at some of these, like some of these hatch marks right here. This one's okay, but then it kind of lost it here a little bit. So be careful with that, you know? If you're gonna do that, I would find a way to continue at the same angle like that. That's gonna help because when you change the angle like this, it changes things. So try to find, especially when you try to render this as one object, right? If you think of it as this is a, an object like this that I'm rendering and it has a shape like this. And so inside the shape, you're trying to capture these lines like this. Okay, if you think of it like that, it's going to help with understanding what am I rendering here. Part of inking, it's very much like penciling. Uh, when you're penciling and you're grouping objects, you're grouping multiple objects and you're making it into one larger shape. The pencils lay down the tracks for that. In the inking side, you're still grouping those objects in a large shape. So you have to think of, I'm not just inking a piece, I'm inking and there are multiple objects on this piece. So they all have to have a certain look and feel. So you're literally trying to capture each object, even though you're drawing an arm, a head, there's multiple objects in there. So you want to be able to try to capture all those objects in there that, that make up the whole pic picture. So be careful with that. Don't just ink this shape. You have to think that it's a jaw and if it's a jaw, it's going to have maybe a shape, something like this. So you want to think of that when you're inking. So try to capture these points right here, these points right here, and this will help you lock in. Bam, bam, this shape right here, boom, boom. It'll help you lock in that jaw like shape. That way you're not going to end up with a line like looking like this and then a line looking like that. See, it's two different shapes. Uh, for the jaw right here. So be careful with that. So your transition here needs to be smoother. The transition from this black to this gray area back to this black again. You have to find a little bit better ways to transition that over. Okay. Again, this is the difference. So instead of you inking this area, think of I'm um, inking a shape like this that has shapes like this in it. If you think of it like that, in each one of these shapes has form. Each one has its own form like this. 
So if you think of it like that, that will help you understand what am I inking here? Am I just inking a dark area or am I inking a human body here with a shape like this sitting on top of it? You know, you want to think of it like that. Just break it down in your brain versus, oh, I see a line. I'm just going to follow this line. And that's not how you want to think about it. That way you're not going to end up with a shaky hands like this or like this, because right now it's pretty shaky. So this is a good example. See how you have these dark areas here, right? You have all these dark areas here, and then you have all these bright areas here. It doesn't feel like it's one solid piece. It doesn't feel like it's a solid piece, I guess. It feels like, oh, I see a dark area, and I'm gonna try to ink this dark area. That's what it feels like. That's not how it is. So you have to think, this is a hand that has a shape like this, with knuckles on it like this and there are bones back here if you think of it like that and you keep that in mind as you're drawing it's going to help you understand what am i drawing here in other words just think of it like it's a tube like this with another tube here with another tube here and inside this tube there's another tube here there's another tube here maybe there's another one right here and now it kind of helps you understand okay what am i lighting you know, what's going on, you know, where are things going to fall? That's how you want to think about it, right? So you can actually come in and ink this area and make this solid black and then come back and ink this area here and then make that solid black. You can think of it like that too. If you approach like that, you're, you're piecing it together versus trying to guess, oh, uh, what are these shapes, you know? So it's almost like, oh, I'm just going to ink this one here with a shadow here. And then here's another one here with uh, a shadow here at the back, but it also has a drop shadow that's coming like this way. If you think of it like that, okay, it'll help. And so that one was uh, not bad. Patrick. Okay, Patrick, inking is a dance. Your lines dance, it's, it's almost like ice skating. It's not dancing anymore, it's ice skating now. It's not bad in certain areas. Looking at some of the line work, some of these lines here could use a little bit more finesse, just keep making it a little, a little bit more smoother. The thought to curve these lines going back like that, I mean, that's cool. That, to me, that's a style thing. So that's, you have your style and you're applying your style to this structure. To do this and then do this again with the, with the muscles, that again, that's a style thing. You know, this is not bad here. This is really good. I like this, how you you kind of went back and forth like this. It's not bad. Inks are really clean. There is like these lines here. This is a really clean, really smooth lines. So are these lines here. Really clean, really smooth. The choice of making this one here kind of thick, it kind of works, but it's, I mean, if you look at that, in comparison to all the other lines around here, it's a little bit different. This is good though. I love that nice solid shapes. And you double on line, you double up on your line. So you, some of your lines you went like this, but it's where it's solid black, you just kind of created like this double line effect. That's pretty good. Right here, you did it. You here, you did it again. And you did it a little bit here. You did it here. You did it here. It's pretty good. Okay. And I love this. That came out nice. So that's pretty cool. Feels a little bit too much with the splatter. I would cut back on the splatter a little bit. If you look at the line quality here and then the line quality you have going on here, it's in harmony. And then the moment you add this the splatter, it kind of throws it off. So I would limit that. And I'd probably come back with some white. I'd probably splatter some white on top of it, you know, just to kind of help to break it up a little. This is too wispy. You need more structure with the clouds. So I try to find a little bit more structure with this. This isn't bad right here. This is not really my style, but I can't really critique that because it's not horrible. It's clean. It's good. It's not really my style, um, but it's not bad either. Yeah, you came back with the white lines. That's pretty good. Good thinking on that one. This is not bad here. The transition. See? Yeah. Pretty good, man. So overall, from what I can see, from what I can tell, still a lot of your line work is still a bit shaky. So I would spend more time just to get more comfortable with, with your tools. 
just so practice using tools more. Ink other people. Don't ink yourself. If you can find some blue lines from another artist, find that. Print it on a board and go practice doing that. You should be able to knock out some some pretty solid good inks within time. But practicing on top of yourself is going to be a little bit tougher because you're already comfortable with your penciling style. And so in your mind, you're already heading in one specific direction. You're comfortable and you're just going. But if you're inking someone else, it changes things. And now you, you're looking from someone else's perspective. You're seeing how someone else sees the same object that you're looking at. And now you're trying to interpret what that other person put down. So practice inking other people. I think that's the best and the quickest way that you're going to improve. You're going to just keep attacking that and just getting better at it. So other than that, just, you know, keep inking every day, learn your tools and just finesse and smooth out your lines a little bit more just remember that inking is a dance so you have to be able to move and flow with with these lines then you want to be able to capture it and make sure that you can get your texture lines looking correct you want to get all your smooth contour lines looking correct you want to get your cross hatching lines looking correct you want to get your distance and your close-up lines looking correct so you just make sure it all works together. There is a solid way of actually doing it, but you also want to implement who you are as an artist into it. It's not just, uh, it must be this way, it must be that way. So if you think of it as a, a bunch of small pieces inside of a large piece that you're inking and you're putting together, I think that's a solid way of just eliminating a lot of the issues that you're going to run into and get yourself on a path of being a good inker. So good job. There's still time to submit for the next assignment. Go to proco.com slash marvel to catch up on our lessons on cinematography, framing, and perspective. Then test your skills in the assignment project and you could end up in the next premium critique video.